Hello there, welcome to everyone's favourite stabby stabby knife uh, job, which is the ninja's anima relic. Why well, am I speaking like this? I don't really know. Apparently, I'm Australian to some people, even though I'm not. Thank you very much out there for those who uh, say I sound Australian. I guess if it makes your day a little bit happier, I'm okay with that. Anyway, here we are. Here is the very first stage of the ninja anima relic. It is the Yukimitsu. Uh, obviously, they just look like a regular pair of stabbers. A uh, nice little sort of East Asian design. Uh, quite nice, nice little short swords. And then you whip them out with the shiny. And now it's like, <gasps> oh, what's with all this blue and ethereal dark energy swirling around it? And yes, appreciate my Ninglam. I quite like it too. It's very luscious indeed. I need to get back onto doing the glam videos. I really do. But either way, here we are. It's shiny, it's swirling around, it is going all around it. It's not very stealthy as like a sort of stealth type weapon, but you know what, that doesn't matter. I really wish they'd add physics to these because it's just a bit... A bit off-putting when you see ribbons like that and they just don't flop about in the wind. They're just very static. But yeah, this is the first step and uh, your big, big first hurdle upon your journey. I believe you get to this after you've done all of the bits where you get the crystals as well as also doing all the dungeons. Um, I believe it's the bit after the dungeons which work when this, this stage actually happens. But yeah, let's get on to the next one which is the Kanagi. Ignore the replicas as always because I have to get the replicas um, for that very reason. Anyway, here's the Kanagi which is the first form change. Quite the different form in Indeed, I quite like it. It's got a nice sort of pattern on the handle itself. Uh, can't really tell what kind of pattern it is. Um, as in, I don't really have the words for it, but it's kind of plant-like. I like it. Obviously, it's once again, East Asian design. I, uh, I mean, the ninja comes from Kugane. <laughs> what more can you say? Uh, the blades itself, though, it's got I like these little spikes it's got here on the back. I like to catch a weapon and sort of take it out. Uh, we'll take it off the enemy and it's almost like a butcher like blade here a little gem i actually originally was using these i believe the stage with this glam but i since changed it to something a bit more magic techy and i like that weapon that exists in one of the end walker dungeons once again sue me you know it's fine but yeah like nice little wings there I like it. It's a very nice second stage, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is the sort of look you want to go for, because it is very ninja-esque. Uh, very good. But then we get to the hyper-conductive stage. Look at that. As is we've seen with the others as well, hyper-conductive, once you get to this stage, the anima is once again trying to burst forth from the relic itself. Uh, it's quite nice, because it's literally something Geralt says is he's just to be an just about being able to contain this energy if we want to put any more into it we're really going to need to get ourselves a new vessel it is a running theme same with all the shiny bits obviously color palettes will vary here and there some will be very different and some will be very similar i really like the way that it's cracked along the blade as well it just is really nice it kind of reminds me of how i used to paint my warhammer figurines but i used to just put blood on them i would just get very i get, get my little get my little paintbrush just dab it in with the red and just go slash, 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 all over it that's what I feel like the artists have done here when it comes to this uh, stage of the relic weapon. <laughs> just slash it and just live with it. Anyway, let's get on to this next stage indeed, which is the Spurs of the Fawn Prince. Quite different and enlarged as well. One of the very few triple bladed sort of weapons you can get in the uh, game for Ninja as well. Uh, if you actually put the relic away, it's just an obsidian knife, really. An obsidian knife. It doesn't look anything special there, does it? But then as soon as you touch it, the anima inside awakens, pulsating with a purplish glow from your aether, activating it. Which you know, gives a nice little effect to the uh, sort of uh, runes and stuff that are around, or just the patterns in general. Makes the, uh, the dark, like, extra accessories really stand out more and just... You can see it's almost like it's like Mercy's wings from Overwatch, but demonic. 
That's the best sort of way I can describe it, if there was a bit few more blades on it too. But it, it, they do look kind of like wings, don't they? And it reminds me of fawns as well. They're very spiky, very spiky. But then, of course, we have the sharpened spurs of the fawn prints. Look at that. Just look at it. Good Lord. It's like there's so much freaking going on here. You can just about see the aether just sort of swirling around like the maelstrom, like it does in the stage with the sharpened relics. It's going from the tip of the blade all the way down to the hilt and back and forth as it flows around. You have uh, this sort of like just encapsulating and acting almost like a prison. Of course, it is on both blades. You can see it quite nicely. And this is the final stage before you start getting onto the actual big major light phase, uh, which I quite like the ones which we're coming up to but i'm pretty sure they have like an almost unpronounceable name for me but i will i will try my best when it comes to it okay nothing but service here nothing but service so here we are we have the <laughs> aptly named for some reason dunseng it's an odd name i will say very very chonky weapon like they are very much like two short swords more than they are actually knives at this point i think this is one of the bigger weapons for a ninja uh, the only thing that's bigger or at least there's very few that are bigger than this relic is stuff like the allegan cleavers for example they are very big weapons when it comes to uh, ninja weapons indeed um if you have here on the handle it's just a nice sort of like it's almost it is wooden i'm gonna say it's almost it is wooden uh, with some runes sort of patterned in there on the handle. Um, and obviously, it's engraved in the pattern of the way the, the metal is. Like, Geralt's handiwork is really shown when it comes to these sort of weapons. Like, he is actually... He might just be going ding, 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 ding. But he's actually crafting these relics for us as well. You see here, there's a nice little gem. That's where the anima itself is being housed. With the runes just being labelled down here. And... I've been reading the Eorzea Encyclopedia and Runology, or whatever you want to call it, I, I'm going to call it that because of Overlord, is actually something that is widely used in weapons. So it's not just patterns and stuff, it is actually something you to conduct and help the Aether flow. And that is something which I actually forgot about to mention the others because I only remembered recently. But yeah, what does it look like when you actually have it in your hands wielded? Let's look look at that it is fire literally fire the runes are glowing with a nice pulsating golden glow fire is coming out from the actual sort of bit here i forget what it's called i, I, I don't want to call it the wrong thing i think it's the hilt uh, as again my knowledge of weapons not great but i like the stabby stabs and it's just the fact that it's flowing around here. It's not in the hand or anything. It's coming out from the bit where the blade is attached. Because, obviously, the anima itself is housed in the rune. That, well, the gem that's, like, here or there. And the see two weapons, so it's kind of split between the two. Uh, so it just makes sense that once it's activated, it's like, Oh! Oh! Master has grabbed me! Oh, it's time to unleash the Warrior of Light's unlimited Aether or whatever it is that we have. That, 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 that is our superpower. But yes, fiery stabbers are not just what makes this weapon fantastic. Do you want to see what the Lux version looks like? Because, uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's like the, it's like the polar opposite of the of the uh, paladin relic. In all honesty, you know how that went blue to yellow or fi like fiery orange. This goes from fiery orange to blue because ah, oh, that is fire, as the kids would say. And the runes themselves also change to blue as well. It is a beautiful set of blades. It really is. And quite frankly, it is, I will admit, it's difficult to find a glam that will work well with this just because they're so chunky. Uh, at least with traditional kind of like ninja like outfits when it comes to scouting. If you look at like the artifact gear and other things as well, they're obviously very uh, East Asian, Kagane, etc, etc. 
which is why it's sometimes nice to have like what I have right now, which is what I call a sort of steampunkish type lab. It's, it's nice. I'll do a video on it at some point anyway, and uh, I'll even show you the weapon I use of it too, just to give you a little idea as well of uh, the outfit itself. Obviously, the uh, the legs themselves are from store, but the rest are obtainable in game, and you can always change certain things if you want to. But that's not what we're on about at the moment. Here we have once again the Sandung's Lux. One of the best looking ones. As I've said more than a few times, the Animus series is amazing. I have repeated myself, but that's okay. If you have made it to this far in the video, once again, thank you. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help get us out that video out there. I'd like to reach a thousand subscribers at some point. It would be lovely just so that I could potentially even earn a little bit of uh, ad revenue for the work I put into these videos. It really will incentivize as well to do so. And also, don't forget to check us out on twitch.tv forward slash Wobzy, because um, I would really like to be a full-time content creator at some point as well. I do it because I enjoy it, not because I you know, want the fame or the money or anything like that. I really do enjoy this with a passion. Um, so yeah, I have a lot more anime relics to go forth with. Once again, thank you for watching and goodbye for now.